Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I know I've been missing out on YouTube for quite some time now. I haven't really made any YouTube videos. Um, so this is kind of like my comeback, I guess, into the YouTube world. Um, today I wanted to walk you through my September reading journal setup. This year I decided to use a B5 journal from Archer and Olive as my reading journal. This is my sh second shelfie in this reading journal. A lot of the stickers that you see here are either from Pineberry Paper or from Marigona Suliard. This is my A to Z challenge and I've been doing pretty well with this challenge. There's always those iffy letters of the alphabet. There is nothing ever is written about. Uh, but other than that, I feel pretty proud of it. My goal for this year was 52 books and I already read it by the end of August and so now I enter my bonus um, reads era. The different colors in this spread mean the, uh, the month in which I read the book so this makes it easier for me to view all of the reads that I read for each month. The next reading challenge is my book bingo and this year I decided to keep two separate book bingos. One is about the books that I read and the second one is about the tropes that I read. Next reading challenge is the buzzwords reading challenge and this is where you read a book um, which has one of these prompts in the title of it. I'm not doing really well on this challenge so far but I'm also not trying to read books with those titles. It's a fun challenge but I'm not going out of my way to find those books. Next is my book bracket and this is where I pick a favorite book of the month. Uh, my favorite book this month was The Lion Women of Tehran and can't wait to talk to you about that book because it was amazing. Next spread is my 12 books by 12 friends challenge and this is where I ask people on Instagram to send me their recommendations for the year. Um, I also haven't been keeping up with this spread much this year, sorry guys. Next is my series tracker and this month I read two books from the Throne of Glass series uh, so I'm just coloring those in. All the stickers in this spread are from Marigona Sully Art. Next is my physical TBR spread and this is where I write down the names of every single book that I own a physical copy of and then once I read it I color it in. I feel like I haven't made a dent at all even though I read so much. Washi tape is from Notebook Therapy and the pet tape um, of the books and the girl is from London Gifties. Next spread is where I track all the books that I get from the book boxes. Next is my social media follower tracking um, and this is where I color in a circle every time I hit a milestone in my social media profile. So um, if you don't follow me on Instagram or TikTok or even on YouTube, now's your chance to subscribe and follow me there. This is my book club um, spread where I put the covers of every book that we read in this book club that I'm part of and I'm such a mood reader. I feel like I haven't read half the books that have been assigned um, and and yeah, this is where I kind of keep track of them and see how I rated them. So those were all of my annual spreads. Now we move on into the September cover page. This year, my monthly cover pages act also as a stats page as well as a separator between months. Since it's September and schools are starting back again, um, I felt like doing a dark academia or like a vintage academia, I think, vibe. Um, so that's what I'm going for with this cover page. I'm starting off by distressing the edges of the scrapbook paper that I had. And next, I'm ripping up some washi tape. I believe this one is from the Notebook Therapy Light Academia set. And then I had this washi tape from Archer and Olive. I think it was part of their quarterly subscription box. I have like a love-hate relationship with the Archer and Olive um, washi tapes. They're very pretty, but they hardly stick on anything. I don't know if it's just like mine or what, but I've had very bad luck usually with their washi tape. I've had this Dark Academia um, stickers from Oregona Suliard and I thought they fit perfectly with the theme, so I couldn't wait to use them. I'm obsessed with their art, so you're going to see a lot of her stickers throughout my journal. This is the first year in which I'm using a B5 size journal, so I'm not going to lie, the size is a little bit intimidating at times, especially when it comes to like cover pages or things like that. Um, so I'm trying to be like more mindful of um, white space or how to fill out the space if needed. 
now that i'm kind of big on youtube um i feel like i have so much content that i need to cover on this social media channel um i've been posting a lot of my spreads on instagram and tiktok and whatnot um but i feel like youtube i haven't posted anything since mid-year of last year um and so i have a lot of reading journal content that i probably need to cover i'm just not sure exactly like what should be the right timeline for it should i post the second half of the year from 2023 or jump straight into the 2024 setup um what do you guys think like how would you like the content to be spread out i'm using my tombos to um letter out the name of the month so september um i felt like just having it plain like that was a little bit too plain so i went in and added a line um with the darker shade of brown and this brought it out a little bit more um i then went in and cut around um the word september um and then i went in with my distressed inks to kind of um vintage it up a little bit i felt like it was a little bit too white um in comparison to the journal paper um since this journal from archer and olive has more of like a cream paper rather than white the white stood out a lot and so i felt like just by dotting a little bit of that um distress ink it just made it look a little bit better I wasn't sure where exactly to place the month title, um, so I ended up just putting it in the middle. I tend to split up my cover pages into four sections, if you will. Um, one section talks about the books read, so it's basically just a list of the books, and um, I tend to put the rating right next to the name so I don't forget. Um, and then the three other sections are more about stats, um, and I separate the stats by genre, so whether it was a fiction, what kind of genre it was, whether it was adult versus YA, um, and if it had any LGBTQ plus representation in it. The other section is the author, um, and this includes um, stats such as author's gender, um, their race, uh, their nationality, um, and then the last section is more about like my rating, so the star rating, and then I also add a little pie chart that um, shows the breakdown between a physical book versus an ebook versus an audiobook. This month, I ended up reading four books. Um, two of them were the Tandon Breed from um, the Throne of Glass series. So I read Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn. Um, and then I read Repeat After Me by Jessica Waterman. Um, and then I read The Lion Women of Tehran by Marianne Kamali. Um, in terms of um, author breakdown, it, there wasn't a lot of diversity. Um, all of the writers are female all of them are white. Um, the only differentiation was that um, the Lion Women of Tehran author, um, she was born in Turkey, um, so the nationality is different. Um, in terms of genre, um, they're all fiction. Um, two of them are fantasy, one is historical fiction, and then another is contemporary. Um, three of them are YA versus one that is adult, um, and only one of them had um, some kind of LGBTQ plus representation. Um, in terms of rating, it was pretty spread out, surprisingly. I had one book per each star rating. So um, The Empire of Storms was a four-star read for me. Tower of Dawn was a two-star. Repeat After Me was three stars. And The Lion Women of Tehran was five stars. And then in terms of the breakdown of books, um, I read three of them in an ebook, um, and one of them was a physical copy. I felt like the page still needed something else, so I went in and added a few more stickers from Marigo Nasuli Art, um, and then also some more washi tape. These dots are from AliExpress. And that's it for my cover page for September. Now we move on to the actual spreads for the individual books that I read. The first up is The Empire of Storms and The Tower of Dawn. Um, and um, I did a tandem read with these books and I'm very glad I did because um, the Empire of Storm storyline was the only reason that kept me going. Um, I feel like if I had read Tower of Dawn by itself, I would have DNF like super, super early. This is when I realized I colored in way too many stars for Empire of Storms, so I just brought out my 
Pineberry paper star rating sticker sheet and then just took one of those and then just colored it in with the correct rating. Um, without spoiling anything, um, the Empire of Storms follows Ellen on her adventures, um, whereas Tower of Dawn follows Kale and Irene in their adventures. Um, and um, Manon storyline on Empire of Storms is literally the only reason I'm still enjoying the Throne of Glass series. I don't know what it is. I feel like a lot of people just brag so much about this and I guess like I had pretty high expectations starting the series but honestly it's been like one of the worst series I've ever had to sit through. I just wish there was a book just about Manon. That's all I care about. She's the only character I care about. And don't get me started on Tower of Dawn. It was the most boring book I ever had to sit through. Um, I felt like Tower of Dawn was literally a straight up copycat of Game of Thrones. Am I the only one? Like, the entire, like, Hand of the King. Like, wasn't that just... That's not an actual historical title. That was just something that George R. R. Martin made up in Game of Thrones. And then the whole Antica and the Kagan and their children and whatnot gave me very, like, Dothraki kind of vibes. I don't know. Anyways, in terms of materials used for these spreads, the washi tape is from um, the washi tape shop, I believe. Um, and I do have a coupon code with them if you do want to shop. Um, whereas the skinny washi, I feel like that must be simply gilded. I'm not 100% certain. It was like such so long ago. Um, the stickers, frames, those are from AliExpress. And then the letter stickers, those are from Sticky Club. Because I'm just struggling with the Throne of Glass series so much, I feel like I have zero inspiration as to what these spreads should look like. So at this point, I'm just winging it and hoping for the best. I'm using my Tombos to write out the name of the books, uh, and I'm kind of matching the colors based on the cover of the book. So for the Empire of Storms, I'm using primarily purples, whereas for Tower of Dawn, I'm using primarily oranges. One thing that I'm liking a lot about the B5 size um, of this journal is that I can make um, portrait size spreads instead of um, having a two page spread or like the square journal was just too square for me and I like that the B5 gives me enough space to both do um, design on, on it as well as just write out my thoughts and favorite quotes felt like the page was still a little bit too empty for my liking so I went in with some pet tape um, and I forget where I got this one from but it's um, a bunch of like chess pieces um, and it's kind of fitting with the book I guess because Aileen tends to play a lot of chess games um, not literal chess games just you know like uh, strategy and whatnot the pet tape on the Tower of Dawn spread is also from the same uh, pet tape um, and I will try to find it so I can link it down below. And that's it for Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn spreads. The next book I read this month is Repeat After Me by Jessica Warman. I received this book as part of a PR package um, and that's why you see this scrapbooky thing. Um, I just saved it from the packaging that I received with this book. I knew I wanted to use it on my spread um, but I felt like the page felt a little bit too white um, and so I decided to take out my watercolors and mimic the tentacles of the octopus at the top as well um, and then add a little bit of like a watery blue around it. Now I'm no watercolor expert. Um, I just put blobs of watercolor on paper and hope for the best. Um, I follow the motto, trust the process and see how it goes with watercolor. So this is what I'm doing here. This book mainly focuses on 18-year-old Emma Davidson, who along with several other students and a chaperone from Xaver Academy are on their senior trip to a remote island where only a supposed billionaire and his daughter reside. There is no Wi-Fi or cell service, the nearest hospital is an hour away by boat, um, so this isn't a trip where they all get to relax and just lay on beach all day. Um, this 
group will spend their days shacking oysters, cleaning up whatever washes up on the beach, and just being pretty much bored. Um, and their nights will be spent in grimy bungalows with no AC. Despite all that, Emma has big plans with her boyfriend. Before those plans can come to fruition, Emma meets and has a taste of an octopus that changes her life. Now, Emma finds herself repeating the same day over and over again. Um, this is one of the stories that you either gonna love or you're gonna hate. I myself ended up being so confused. This is like the weirdest book I've ever read in a long long time um i don't even know how to categorize it like i don't know what kind of book this is um it's just it, it's just super weird the book aims for humor but is heavily reliant on crude and vulgar content which often left me saying wtf as opposed to laughing um it may appeal more towards a younger audience i'm not sure the book is definitely on like an upper ya kind of level the relationship between Emma and Louis is the only highlight of the book, I would say, um, and it shows genuine growth. The other characters are so unlikable, um, and their development, I think, is overshadowed by the book's focus on Brad and his shop value. Um, I'm just, yeah, you don't, you cannot like any of the other characters, no matter how much you try. The other thing I did not like was the ending. It answered absolutely nothing. Um, I still don't know like if I was supposed to understand how the time loop was happening or how to end it or if it just never ends. Um, I just would like to understand what the author's idea was and I don't know, I, I wouldn't be able to explain to you what the author's idea was and how this time loop works because it was never explained on the book. The last book I read in September is The Lion Women of Tehran by Marianne Kamali. Um, and this was also my favorite book of the month. It's a historical fiction set in Iran. Um, and I absolutely loved this entire story. I could not stop crying. The author takes us on a decades-long friendship between two girls, Ellie and Homa. They first become friends as children while standing their differences in class and family situations. Over time and circumstances, they drift apart and then are eventually reunited again in high school. They grow together as women during one of the most volatile political times in Iran's history. Not only was the story beautifully written, it was also filled with the savory tastes of Persian food. Whenever Kamali would write about cooking and meals at restaurants, my mouth would water. She really has a way of making the, each of the delicacies jump off the page and had me looking up Persian recipes to try in my own kitchen. Set in Tehran during the 1950s and the events following the overthrow of the Shah Iranian Revolution in the 70s and 80s, this story vividly captures the challenges women in Iran experience. This is a story of feminism, activism, and commitment to a cause and a belief. It is filled with love, devotion, betrayal, and forgiveness. This tale was stark and sobering, but sentimental and sweet all at the same time. The narrative grabbed me right away. I could not put it down. This is definitely a worthwhile read. In terms of the spread, I wanted it to be pretty vintagey, so I used uh, some scrap paper that I had left over from the um, cover page for September, and then I did similar thing where I distressed the edge to make it look a little bit more vintage. I also had some other scrapbooking paper around, um, and I just cut it up a little bit, um, and then I just glued it on the spread. Um, the stickers that you see, they're all from AliExpress, except from the girls. Those are pet tape from London Gifties. Now I'm using my Magna Carta Flex pen to write out the title. The ink that I'm using is um, Iroshizuku Yamabudo. I know a lot of people say that the Archer and Olive uh, paper doesn't handle fountain pens 
well um but i haven't really had much of an issue i mean it, i haven't seen any feathering when it comes to um the flex nibs and those are the ones that put down a lot of ink so i've been pretty happy um so far i have been using fountain pens almost consistently throughout this entire journal and i've seen very very rare a bleed through um, and very very rare feathering I wanted to end this recording with one of my favorite quotes from this book. Feminism comes in many shapes. We should not shame women who choose to take care of home and family, as long as it's the women's choice. A woman has a right to live a life of intense career ambition, or one of more mellow ambition, or what have you. As I say, whatever she chooses. And these were all of the spreads that I had for you today. Thank you so much for sticking with me um, and through my blubber and listening to me and watching this video. Hopefully, I'll see you on the next one.